Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to tdcat.com. Today I'm looking at the X-Rite Color Checker. This is a uh, brand new tool for me, even though it's been around for absolutely ages. Uh, I've recently purchased one and uh, the actual device I'm using was manufactured in 2014. But of course they have been around for a lot longer than that and are pretty much industry standard. Uh, the general idea being that you have a 24 color checker a matrix of colors for uh, for your software to check against rather than just sort of balancing against sort of a, a neutral gray or something like that. So in this case, this is the X-Rite matrix and there are a couple of other types, but um, I've only, I'm only aware of sort of two or three. So this is pretty well supported across the board. I purchased this for use in video, even though this is the sort of photography one, the actual matrix, matrix is exactly the same. So... DaVinci Resolve supports this natively, so you can kind of just draw a thing around it and uh, it will match the colors accordingly. But you can download the software for use with your camera from the X-Rite website. Uh, it does come with a disc when you buy it, but uh, you might as well just go to the latest, again, go and get the latest one. So if you go to xrite.com, passport support, then you get redirected to the page that uh, has this on. So you move down to here and go to support, and then you have your software downloads. Uh, you'll notice that there is just a plugin, and you don't really want just the plugin because you want to be able to have the fallback of the standalone DNG profiler. I'll explain a little more in a second what that's about. But the color checker camera calibration is what you need, and you have the latest version here from the 14th of the 2nd, 2016. So if this if this doesn't, by any chance, install your Lightroom plugin um, itself, then you can sort of fall back to this, but you shouldn't have to bother with that. So the standard standalone version, if I just open that up on my PC here quickly, is purely something where you can drop a DNG image in, and it says here, if auto detection fails, then, you know, Put an image in here and create a profile using the standalone software but you should be able to do it all from within lightroom there are only certain occasions when creating your camera's profile won't work and that's if you haven't exposed the image correctly uh, or you know you, you include too much of the rest of the shot or you know all the colors aren't just aren't well balanced enough really so when you hold it up you just want to try and get it fairly straight ish so you haven't got too much of a kind of angle on it but it doesn't again that doesn't matter too much but this particular shot is a little overexposed so i took a second one and you'll see the difference there we've just got it a little bit more accurately exposed and you can sort of tell by this white so the very first thing i'm going to do is just take a white balance check and i can do that against pretty much any of the grays not the white white you can't do it against the white white i think lightroom will whinge if i do that no maybe not no, maybe I can. Okay, but I think if, if that were was a, a true white, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm going to do it against one of the greys anyway. And so I'll take my white balance. And now what I'm going to do is just crop this image in like this around the crop markers that you see at the side. And, and you know, don't have it too far in like this. You don't want to cut off those squares. But again, keep it fairly neat. And you should do, really do this for any uh, major lighting change, I suppose. I actually bought this to test with my CFL bulbs because I use continuous lighting for video with CFL bulbs. And CFL bulbs are notoriously bad. They have a really low CRI, so a color rendering index of like, I don't know, they're just rubbish. And come up and whenever you use them they, they, your video can have this really horrible green cast all uh, all over it and it just looks really unnatural so I was thinking well okay this it can't bring back the colors that haven't been captured but at least it can match the ones that are there accurately with each other and it works great it works absolutely brilliantly so I'm to you know totally happy with that so this is the very first time I've used it for pictures so I just wanted to see what the difference was like uh, so as it's a Lightroom plugin, it goes into your export folder because that's where Lightroom handles plugins. But when you've installed the software, you should see that it has X-Rite presets and the color checker passport. So I'm just going to click on that straight from that crop and I'm going to give my profile a name. And this was taken on the 5D Mark III and it was basically an overcast sky. So 
uh, it was natural light through the window and overcast. I'm just going to call it 5D overcast. So it's, it'll just go away. You can see in the top right hand side now that it is processing the profile. It should just give me a, a confirmation message when it's done. Uh, it does take a few seconds. So, excellent. The profile has been generated successfully. If you're wondering where it stores them, it puts them in the camera raw camera profile. So it doesn't put them with the rest of the Lightroom ones. It actually puts them in the camera raw, raw one. So if you wanting to find that you can go to that in your users folder under app data which does isn't shown naturally and go into roaming and into adobe and then into camera raw and then camera profiles that's on windows sorry mac guys i've no idea what it is on the mac so you'll see there that that is the dcp profile that i've just created and that can be that's a standard file so it can be used it's the same file format that all the lightroom profiles that are already on there for all different cameras, uh, you know, it's the same format, so that can be used in those two. And we've now got our profile to work on other images with. So I, I sort of just was taking a few shots this morning, and I intentionally did them of bold coloured toys, because I wanted to be able to show or illustrate the difference with some nice bold colours. So here we go, here's our first image of some blocks, and the nice red, greens, and blue. But what you'll notice well, primarily on the blues, is if we go down to our camera calibration section now, which is where we have our camera profiles, it's always generally set to Adobe Standard, and that's usually great for most stuff. You know, don't get me wrong, this isn't going to do absolute miracles. What it is going to do, though, is it's going to colour correct. So it's not going to grade, it's not going to change anything, it's just going to get your colours right and give you a reference, a good reference starting point. That's the purpose of this. It's not sort of, it's not going to sort of do some magical change to everything. Though the changes can be quite dramatic at times. So here we go. Here's our profile, 5D Overcast. Oh, in fact, I'm, I will have to restart, won't I? Because that's still got old ones in. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. Okay, brilliant. That is should be now loaded in with the latest. Yeah, so we've just got 5D Overcast. Now, if you look at the blues there, more than anything else, go back to standard, look at the text, this D here, the text, and also the brick next to it. When I switch over now, it changes to this much, much darker blue. And if I look at the bricks with my eyes, they are that color, you know? I'm not sort of just thinking, all oh, right, it's just made that more contrasty and darker. and It's just changed, it's just slightly adjusted the colours in relation to each other to create something that's more true to life. You know, that, that is accurate. And here's a more subtle example. So we have our, uh, one of our Brio trains here, which is an, an orange colour. And, you know, that's pretty, pretty accurate. But if we change it to the 5D Overcast... What you'll notice here at the front is this orange just becomes very slightly lighter. It's just as not quite as kind of orange orange and more of a faded 70s orange. And again, you look at the train and that is exactly what it is like. That is the difference I was going for on that picture. One final example for you, and this is one that's got miles in there. So we're not interested so much with his with his skin tones, because the skin tones from the camera natively are, are fine, you know, they're good. It's, it's again, and just to stress, this isn't going to work one absolute miracles, but it's going to get stuff right. It's all about, um, you know, for a landscape photographer, you might not notice any difference, but if you're a portrait photographer and you've got a model with a very specific colour in her hair, or she's wearing clothing, or he's wearing clothing that has very definite sort of a very definite colour tone that you want to bring out, you can adjust all that later, yes, true, but you want to get it absolutely bang on out of the camera, and that's what this will help you do. So there we go. Wow. Did, he, did you notice any difference? Well, yeah, a little bit on his jeans. But the main difference that I picked out was here. Watch the wheels of the train. Wow. Like, super subtle. Really, really subtle. But again, accurate. 
I didn't even know this, actually. I, I went back to and picked up the train before I did this tutorial and looked because I didn't know that whether which one was right. But they're not this faded blue colour. They are this deep blue colour. So I'm personally totally happy with the results that I'm getting from this. They're not, it's not a cheap product. It's re retails about £77. I got it for £77 from Wex Photographic in the UK. We're not sponsored by them. They're just a very good retailer in the UK. who always package stuff brilliantly and get stuff out. And their prices are pretty competitive. I assume, therefore, that it's probably about $75 or $80 uh, because usually prices between the US and the UK match, even though the, obviously the exchange rate does not. So it's not a cheap product. It does come with a software, but again, you'll just download the latest version of that anyway. But if you're serious about kind of getting that color right from the start and then grading after that, then definitely worth going for. And particularly if you're going to work in video, uh, I think it's f much, much more important in video because you, you have less flexibility to do those adjustments in, uh, in post-processing. So it's the X-Rite Color Checker. Been around for ages, as I say, but it's the first time I've used one. So I just wanted to take a quick look and uh, give you my opinions and show you, what I show you what difference it can make. So this is tdcat.com signing off for now. I will catch you soon.